Welcome to Season 2. Another episode from Team MSRV, where we show you how to live a more fulfilling life through our adventures and our experiences. That's right, giving you the confidence and knowledge you need to create your own path and navigate your way through this disease. Don't forget, as a team, we, we got, got this. this. Hi everyone. This week's video is about MS and the heat and how it's affecting me. That's right, affecting you and probably anyone else with MS or yes. any other autoimmune disorder at this point. I mean, it's been record-breaking heat across the country for 2022. That is true. And yeah. then, I don't think they know yet, but we should probably tell them kind of what's going on and why they haven't really heard from us regularly. Yeah, it's been a while. We've been going through you know, a lot of stuff, but yes. uh, we're kind of like living in a different... Is well, it? We're, we're living in different locations right now. <laughs> yes. Um, I found a great job in Arizona. Um, you know, as we were traveling around with our RVs, everyone knows. Yes. Um, landed some great work. And um, so I think we're going to stay here. I really like the area. Every time you've come to visit, you seem to love it over here. I do, but now in the summer, it's oh, yeah. different. <laughs> it's so bad. So like this whole week, it's like 105 to 110 every day. So yeah, I'm going back to Maine and Frankie's going to stay in Phoenix yes, to do his job. To keep working yeah. and build up our... You know, I'm going to start building our roots here, basically. Um, it's only for the summer transition, and then you'll be here full-time, probably, I don't know, come October or something like that. Yeah, hopefully it will work like that, um, yes. But we also learned that we probably won't have a place permanently in the desert here. Mm -hmm. We learned that locally, if you go north by an hour or so, you're in the mountains, and the temperatures drop by like 20 degrees. Yeah, so much cooler. Which is much better. Mm -hmm. So now what we do is, when she comes here, I take some time off from work, and we go up there to the cooler area so she can actually have fun and be and outside. Breed and breed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not to mention Rocky, too. He struggles. He's a black lab, which is from Canada, you yes. know? So he's not built for that either. That's true. And then Rocky is staying with Frankie. Yeah. Uh, while I go back to Maine. So, yeah, yeah. You know, taking turns. I've been visiting you a little bit more, but it's a lot harder because it's a drive for me when you can fly and it's just, it, so that's what it is right now. Yeah, and then flying, it's, it's hard for me because it's a lot of like walking and different places. Brain and, power, where am I? Where's my terminal? I, yeah, and so it's been really crazy and stressful, but Hey, how we're doing it. Hey. Hey, we're doing it. <laughs> let's keep rolling here. Okay, let's talk about the heat. How miserable I was when I got here. I mean, we went to see some friends. They had a pool. I went in a pool. It was... Warm. <laughs> it's not warm. very refreshing. Yes, and then when I see him, when I come see him and take a shower, there's no cold shower here. It's like... It's, it's like not, the water's like 98 degrees. Yeah, it's not even like <laughs> lukewarm. It's like... Yeah, we don't have any hot water bill in the summer, that's I, for sure. I was like, I was shocked when I seen that. I was like, wow, okay. It has been the worst heat we've ever experienced. Yes. I mean, by far. It's a mm -hmm. record for us, shattered. I mean, I think the worst that I've experienced while you weren't here was 114. Oh. Which I'm sure any Phoenicians would laugh at me because it's been a lot hotter than that here. But to me, that's brutal. So how are you doing, like, with the heat by... You. For me, I, I don't mind, you know, I mean, I, I have to manage Rocky's time outside a little better, so we plan, just like with MS, I plan everything according to our environment, and what's safe and what's not, and Rocky going out at noon is a terrible idea. I mean, any time after, after 11 a.m. is so hot, and he goes out and comes right back in, because it's just so hot, even in the shade, he's dying. It's hurt. His tootsie must hurt like hot. Yeah, well, I, I plan that too. And mm. We keep them off the blacktop, and like, and when I do, I make sure there's a shade path that we're sticking to. So th there's some challenges with that. That you know, it's a new location, new environment. You adapt. Yeah. That's what we do. Like that's what the, we're the masters of, and we're trying to teach everyone. <laughs> yes. You can still live happily yes. even in a bad place. It's challenging. It's challenging yeah. in figuring out how it's going to work. Because in the winter, you're going to be fine here. All winter long, it's going to be like 72 in the day high, you know? Nice. So that's great. Yeah. So that's perfect. We can do outdoor activities. I, I look at the, the summers here as like the winters in northern Maine. 
you're really stuck inside. You go from your house to your car, car to the store, store to your car, car to your house. Same thing here. Yeah, but in the winter, you bundle up. In the summer, when it's like 114, you said, yeah. uh, you can't take nothing else off. You can because... only <laughs> before you're breaking the law. Right. <laughs> uh, good point. Uh, yeah. Good point. Okay. So, so some of the things, one thing that I've learned a lot about and I've taught you about and I want to teach everyone here about is heat stroke and the dangers of that because heat stroke, it's good to be able to identify it if someone's starting to get heat stroke what it's like when they are experiencing heat stroke and then how to like come out of it. Mm. Like how to help somebody if you are witnessing it or if it's yourself, how maybe you can help yourself. There is risk and danger of a heat stroke plus my MS symptoms. Right, and that's why it's so important to identify the three stages that someone would go through. Yes. So one, you're overeating. So you're, oh, let's check or cheat cheat. Yeah, of course, we want to be accurate. <laughs> so it's uh, pulse racing, lightheaded, uh, heavy sweating, your yep. face is like redness. Like flushness in the face. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Skin is cool and moist, kind of like goosebumps, even though it's 100 degrees. Right. And then also when you stand up, you feel like your blood pressure is going down like very low. I think it actually does happen. Yeah. It actually drops and it makes you, that's what it kind of makes you lightheaded, which is likely to collapse. That's true. So, you know, if you're starting to feel those symptoms, hold on to something if you're standing up right. from a sitting position just to protect yourself I and mean, you don't want to hit your head. Yes. Stage two is heat exhaustion. Mm hmm So that's like fatigue, nausea, Headaches. Headaches. Yeah. Oh, it's like all the MS symptoms. These are <laughs> right. These are already symptoms. That's like you're already starting a stage yes. two. Extreme thirst. Muscle cramping. Yeah. That's another MS symptom. Yeah. Weakness. Weakness. Confusion. And then sweat, cold cycle. Yeah, you know when you start sweating, and then because you're sweating so much, it evaporates. You start shivering, oh. and then you go back to like back and forth, okay. and um, that's that's because your your body's exhausted from cooling. Stage three is heat stroke. So it's hyperthermia. Not hypo, but hyper. That's right, hypo is cold. Yes. Like frozen lake, hyperthermia is, is hyper. Yes. You're higher. So this is like the danger zone. Some of the symptoms is confusion, um, you're dehydrated. dehydrated to the point that drinking isn't going to really help you almost need IV help at that point okay and then we have flushing so rapid breathing is one yep nervous system failure is another one yeah and then already is a problem for people with MS yeah so if that starts failing you and you're losing sensation in body parts mm -hmm. beyond the sensations you have already lost yes it's a lot of trouble for you and for anyone trying to help you it is it's everyone's in the danger zone at that point so you also have the lightheaded it will be much worse than the first the stage two that we had mm. it'll be more dizzy yeah like we're like boom spinning kind of right and then there's also um, muscle spasm. That are extreme now. These it's ones are going to be painful. Painful, yeah. Mm, not like stage two. Stage two might be like, oh, I have a leg cramp, a leg cramp, let me take a break. But this one's going to be like, oh, my leg is cramping hard. And like, it's, it's painful. Okay, we got more. We got loss of appetite. You're pale. Yeah, your skin gets pale. And then your skin gets clammy too. Uh, that's one. It's and, like a sweaty, wet skin. Mm -hmm. You're not really like sweating. There's always a chance of passing out or fainting. That's and that's extreme. That that's when you're in the worst situation because if you're outdoors, you can't protect yourself. So if you're unconscious and you're laying on the ground and the sun's beating on you, you're it's, in danger. Especially if you're by yourself. Right. Never be by yourself when you go outside. Especially I around here. There's risk factors that increase the likelihood that you yourself will experience heat stroke. So let's talk about those a little bit. Okay. There's age. That's right. The older you are, the less able you are to deal with extreme conditions. Oh, there's also um, people with lung issue too. That's one like COPD is one of those. Yes. There's also what the heck just happened. 
I don't know. We kept talking and doing the video. And... I'm pretty sure the batteries <laughs> ran out on the receiver part of our microphone. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so we did all kinds of work and we're going to kind of have to back up and so take we, it from here. Yes, if we repeat ourselves, sorry. Uh, yeah, so you have COPD. Right. That's a big one. Asthma must be one. Yes, That's that is. Long. And then you have like maybe fluid around your lungs. Oh, especially with age again, right? I remember that happened to my grandmother. Yeah. Remember she had fluid in her lungs, mm -hmm. so that's just that much less air capacity, that much less oxygen. Yeah, and you recover. have a hard time breathing mm -hmm. with that. Good yes. point. Yep. Okay, next one. Exertion from actual physical labor. Like if you're outside, and, and this may seem small, but mowing the lawn is physical labor. I mean, even if it's a pusher, but it pulls itself, it's still it's, labor. You're walking hard. Yeah, plus the sun is hitting you when you're outside pushing along. That's more. right, and that's where people discount the mm -hmm. sun. The power yes. of that sun baking on your neck and on your back, it, it's, it's, harsh. it's harsh. It's bad on you. <laughs> <laughs> that <Yeah>. was not <laughs> scripted. <laughs> so uh, that's definitely another factor that you should be aware of. It's a big one. I mean, a physical exertion. It could be even working in the garden. It, I mean, try to wear big hats. Right, and even like not even walk, working, you could just like be walking on a sidewalk with no shade. That's physical labor. Mm -hmm. And we, I know we said it, but we're going to say it again. Sunscreen, people. If All you're the time. In the sun. All the time. Yes. I, I know, it's gross sounding, and it's, but they make some nice oil-free kind. Yeah. You have to put it on a little more often. I think even like Neutrogena does a nice one. I think so, I'm, yeah. No plug, because we don't get paid for that kind of stuff. It's just, no. it's just what we, we use. We hate the oily, greasy thing, and then we have leather seats, and we don't want that all over our car. So. <laughs> <No. laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So another is a sudden exposure, like your car breaking down. Ooh, that's a good one. Yes. Good point. So you don't want to stay in the car, but if that's the only thing that you have to a you, shaded, yeah, to give you shade, yeah, that's right. You would then you stay in the car with the windows down as much as you can. Right. I mean, but yeah, if you can get out of the car because it's like a little hot box, obviously. And then yeah. in Arizona, it's like a hundred times worse than anything we've ever seen, where you don't want to be in there. You'd be better off crawling under the car, probably. That's true. I don't know if that's true. Don't actually do that. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want to say there was like uh, something that happened to us the other day that we went to do an activity and then we didn't get gas. And then when we came back, the exits were like far apart and the <laughs> gas was really low. I mean, I was stressing out and I know you were stressing out too, going, oh my God, it's 103 degrees <laughs> and we're, and we're on a highway. And if we lose a loss, a run out of gas, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble, like serious trouble because the next like gas station was like 20 miles away at that point and it was at the it was at the the spot in the the gas tank where the it doesn't tell you how many miles you have left it just says low which and means now, like you're just kind of like hoping you don't run out at that point i was sweating bullet <laughs> in the <laughs> ac, in AC. so we slowed down because it's like you get a little bit get better gas mileage yeah and, but anyway that's a different story it was scary it's, it's just, just a but the fact that we were worried about, I mean, like the exits were so far apart and we didn't realize that, that, you know, I would have walked, if nobody stopped, I probably would have had to walk 10, 20 miles. Yeah. If I could have walked that far. Right. It was hot. I mean, we and had- then you'd, And I've been worried about you at I the would car. be in the car with Rocky. Who we, also can't take it. No, cause he's so he's black. So, well, yeah, I mean, he's a black lab and the sun just cooks him. Even if it's like 70, he's like, He's, he is, that's so, true. So yeah. Anyway, let's keep talking about okay, risk factors. Yes. No AC at home or even at work. Right, especially if it's like all day long and even if you're in front of a fan and you feel that coolness, I mean, it's it, kind of relieving, but it's not relief. It's not, it's still like the air is still hot. Yeah, it's, it's like a Band-Aid on yeah. a wound that you need stitches for. Seriously. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. It's like so, I had to think about that one. <laughs> that's a little heavy. <laughs> but no, that's serious though. That I mean, the AC, there's a lot of times, first of all, think about it. Like the public library is a good place you can go cool off. Yeah. Anywhere. Public stores. Any store. Some stores though, if you're not buying, they don't like you in there. 
Right. So that's why I say the public library is a good one. Yeah. Um, there's cooling centers in, a in Arizona, and I'm sure they're all over the country, where places where people that can't afford AC, yeah. they can go hang out there, play cards and board games. And And I feel like a fire department too would have something would, like that. It, at least they would help you if you were yeah. in distress. Yeah. And, and there's probably a lot more. Matter of fact, if you know of resources, share them in the comments. Yes, please. That, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, another risk factor would be medications. A lot of people don't consider the side effects of their medications. Some may be dry mouth, like you. You're always dehydrated. You're always thirsty. Yes. Is it amitriptyline or something? Yes, or? that's the that's one. The... <laughs> oh so, my gosh, it's like you take it. You must take cotton balls. It's, it's <laughs> like we have to stop for this video because I have to keep drinking so, water. <laughs> so there's that. Yes, that's uh, a big one. And then the other one, it reduces your ability to handle the sun, the exposure from the sun. Yeah, there's some medication that will do that. that That's true. That you really have to know the side effects of the medications you're taking because what you normally might think an hour you can last out there might be reduced to a half an hour. Yeah. And then you push through that half an hour to the hour and then you're wondering why the next three days you're crashed out. Yes. You can avoid that crash if you pre-plan and know your limits. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. And drink. Of course, we have chronic illness, like MS. Right. That's a... That and um, there's a whole bunch of other autoimmune disorders yes. too that also, they kind of have the same effect. Your immune system is already having a hard time. Yes, it keeps fighting like it's every day. It's tired all the time. All the time. You can't blame it. I no. mean, if you had to shovel dirt all day, every day, day in and day out, you'd be tired. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, that picture it that way. That's really what's happening, except it's shoveling dirt, what it thinks is bad inside of you. Right. Or your medication is trying to fight that. <laughs> it's trying. Big, it's a battle in there. <laughs> There's some like activities that we do is like your MS, like my MS will just like beat me up and I'll stay in bed for a couple days. A couple days, yeah. I mean, at least one day after and then um, uh, sometimes like you're groggy the next day after that, the second day yeah. after. But we plan. As you know, in all our previous videos, we always talk about understanding your illness so yes. you know your own limitations so you don't overexert yourself. That's true. And, and that's part of the trick. And we still find things that tire you up. Bowling. Because yeah. you use so many muscles, we, I think. That I don't really use anymore. Because you're not anymore. walking. You're not mountain climbing. Yeah, you're just bowling. Just bowling. But, but it's a heavy ball and yeah. it's kind of exciting. There's all kinds of and lights. And I don't use like the heavy, heavy ball, I have like the light no, one. Might, yeah, I think you're like eight. A, <laughs> Not even, eight, like, yeah. like five now It hits the pin, flies to the side. Yes. It's fun. It was but fun still. It was fun. But the activity is enough to exert energy. Yeah. To exert you enough where you feel tired. Yes. And that's indoors. It is. Has AC. So, and AC. Mm -hmm. A good point, right? Yeah. And not like tennis or squash, for example, no. where you're outside in the sun and you're moving. Not that many of our viewers are probably playing those sports, but I'm sure there it's out there. It's I'm out sure there. there's people yeah, doing it. I mean, if you can imagine it, someone's doing it. Yeah. So there is things that you could do to prevent heat strokes and keep yourself safe. Yes. So first of all, is the one is loose clothes or the clothes that I keep buying. The cooling The cooling, clothes. Yeah. yeah. So the loose clothes allows air to flow between the clothing and your skin, yes. allowing for evaporation of your sweat, which is our cooling mechanism, right? Right. Wow, so scientific. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, but, but realistically, I mean, that's what the, how it works, right? And as it moves around, it kind of creates its own breeze and breathes. Yeah. Um, you want cotton, you really don't want Maybe not always cotton because your cooling clothes have other materials yeah, in there. Yeah, it does. But I say the cotton because it absorbs and evaporates quickly. Oh, that's true. So that's a good, it's a good lightweight material that you can use to keep cool. I mean, I don't like to show my sweat. That's a good point. You know? Yeah. So I, I try to do like loose and big and... Yeah. yeah. And it cools for you. Yeah. But when you're wearing your cooling clothes, those are a little tighter, yeah. I feel like. And I don't have... Like I don't have the problem of like sweating. With and those. again, we don't get no, no plugs or no. No, we don't. We don't get likes from them. We don't get anything. No. But we, we buy it because it works for you. Yes. And it's a product that actually works. So Arctic Cool is one of them. I know there's another one on Amazon you buy from, but Arctic Cool seems to be the company that's dominating yes. right now. They have the best stuff. Mm -hmm. yep. So I mean, again, that's not a plug for them, 
but it's it's good for us. It works. Yeah. So check that out. It's sometimes pricey. It's very so watch pricey. for sales. Like subscribe to their newsletter so yes. you know when the sales are coming. Yeah. And you just got like 50% off. I did. A whole bunch of stuff. So that yeah. was worth it. It so, was good, yes. So watch the stuff. But anyway, so cooling clothes, bandana type stuff, yeah. loose, loose material, right. uh, evaporative material. Nothing that traps heat. No. So the next one is skin protection. Again and again. And again and again. It's sunscreen, is it's an umbrella maybe yes. it could be any it's staying in the shade um but if you are going to be in the sun like you said the highest spf you can handle or get right. um and keep applying it that stuff you need to reapply and then try to stay away i mean i know it's hard but try to stay away from the sun 10 to 4. it's when the sun that, is really beaming good point that's when it's the highest in the sky and it's really baking yes. everything and i noticed too over here that they have I mean, I know you don't want to wear it, but it has the workers has like the shade here. It's like a scarf, and then they have a hat. Yeah, they protect their skin. Yeah. And they have these really light, light fitting, loose. I right. think it has to be cotton because it just blows around on them. Mm -hmm. But they're able to work in it all day. Yeah. And we're talking like 108 degrees sometimes. It's crazy. Another one would be fluids. Plenty of fluids, and I think it's one liter per hour per person is how you do the math, especially when it's really hot. Yes, and when we say fluid, it's no caffeine. Yeah, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, those don't really count because no. they're so loaded with chemicals. Mm -hmm. You really need fluid, because when you think about it, when you sweat, you're not sweating Pepsi. <laughs> no. Right? So that fluid needs to be processed. Yeah. So if you're pounding that kind of fluid in the sun, you're not getting hydrated fast enough because it has to pass through, I think it's your kidneys. Again, I'm no doctor, I but I think, think that so, that's the yeah. thing that cleans yes. and pulls the water out and sends the other stuff mm -hmm. to your bladder. Yeah. yeah. So I think that that's the way that works. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, have a Pepsi if you want. I'm just saying drink a lot of water, water. with it. There's also the, the drink that has electrolytes. Like Powerade and yeah. Gatorade. Yeah, and so that's still good. Have water now that electrolyte water yes. yeah that's that's also good for hydration mm -hmm. it's the caffeine really that's a problem yes I mean drink a coffee in the morning like you normally do do your thing you know I'm just just also accompany it with water a lot more water especially if you know you're gonna be outdoors or in a hot area where you have no choice but to be there that's true because the better choice would be not in that area right so I think we already said this but check your med like the side effects of your meds good point because you never know no, I mean, like, like we said earlier, right? Yeah. It's, it could be a side effect that direct sun is dangerous for you. Exactly, yes. So before you go into that baseball game, you know, maybe you're going to go to a little league game or something. We know this is life. These are yeah. real things that happen. Right. Just bring an umbrella out. Yeah, like make hat. sure your medications aren't going to mess with you. And if they are, do what you can to counteract that. Be the balance. Yeah. You, you have to make these choices. So there's another thing to never sit in a parked car without AC you want to have your AC on when you park somewhere. I mean, yeah, and we're talking again, direct sunlight and summertime type stuff. Yes. I mean, you know, if it's in the winter time, you're probably gonna be safe to sit in your car in direct sunlight without the AC. But we're talking when it's 90 degrees out, even 85 and humid, that is hot. It is, yes. And I mean, so sitting in the car, I mean, obviously you'd have the windows down, but still you're getting that radiant heat from all the other parts of the car too. Mm -hmm. So if you can't do it with the AC running, we recommend finding a different place to sit down. Yes. Just why push your luck? Right, that's true. Like we said before, overexertion, physical labor is also a danger for you, right? Yes. I mean, you can't push in the sunlight. So if you have gardening to do or some yard work you want to take care of, maybe do that early in the morning or again later in the Late, evening, yeah. like you said earlier. Yes. Between 10 to 4 is definitely the no-go zone. I would say like when we used to have a garden, we used to go like after supper. It's nice and light, the sun was uh, down, mm -hmm. and it was... And I also remember going in the morning too. Yes, that's right. When it right. was cool enough that the bugs weren't out there, bugging that's, us. That's true. So get acclimated, condition yourself. Yeah, I mean you can kind of build up your tolerance if you practice anything. Yeah, that's true. So you kind of put yourself in a warmer situation where you're not in the extreme heat yet, and see how long that takes you to have an effect or don't push it and say, hey, I made it for 10 minutes, I'm coming back in to cool off. And then go back out and try 20 minutes and see what happens. Yeah. And this is before you go out somewhere where you're out and dressed up already and you're like in public and you did all this work just to overheat. 
that's true. Right, and like you, ruin your own night. You don't want to do that. Right, you want to. You want to be able to live. Like practice it, like, like practicing, like Just something. Just practicing anything else, like guitar, like anything. You want to get good at it, so you'll you'll learn how to prehydrate, so you're well hydrated before you go out. Mm -hmm. There's things like that you can do. That's true. And then, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm not hydrated enough, I start having headaches. I was just going to say, you get headaches right away. <laughs> so, that's a, I mean... Yeah, and if you're in a place with loud music, who wants to do that with a headache? Exactly. Right. Again, you're just pre-planning so you can have a good time and not worry. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's what we're all about. Yes. Live it up. Okay. Next, always use extra precaution with MS. Make sure you plan, plan, plan because MS will beat you up. Even on a good day, MS sneaks up on you. It does. You Like you wake up, you're like, ah, this is going to be a good day. And then the MS goes. Right. So yeah. if you can help that, if you can help guide and maybe put some bumper rails and guide your day because you know these obstacles are coming, you could prevent it. That's true. Yeah. By, by planning for that. Mm -hmm. For example, another good example here of pre-planning, and this has nothing to do with um, a heat stroke, but this does have to do with infusions. Before my infusion, I have to drink a lot of water so your vein is nice and puffy and they're able to use your vein. It's a pre-plan. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't do that... They would be sticking you. Sticking and sticking. Let's try the other arm. Let's try your forearm. Right. And that's no fun because you've been in that situation and I've seen it. it was seven holes. Yes. It's like, gosh. That's true. So we're almost done here. Hang in there. Yes. <laughs> Final subject we have to talk about is what to do if you or someone around you is experiencing actual heat stroke. See, they cross that line that, you know, sometimes you're not trying to and you're just trying to get back to the car and you go into heat stroke because you're just trying to recover. Yeah, so the first thing you need to do is get the person out of the sun. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Sun is bad. Sun equals danger. <laughs> That's it. Yes. Oh, get, if it's possible, put them in air conditioning. Oh, yeah. That would be the best thing. I mean, clearly. But if you're outside somewhere at an event, it might not be possible to Shaded, get them. Shaded. Try to get them. Yeah, yeah. Even if that means umbrellas or people shading them. Mm -hmm. with, you know, however you can get them out of that direct sunlight. That's number one. Yes. For sure. Yes. Okay, number two. Try to take clothes out. Like if you have too much, take some clothes. Like a layer off. Or, yes. Mm -hmm. You can get heat stroke in the summer too. I mean in the summer, in the fall too, by just having too much clothes on. Hunters it happens to a lot because they, they overdress for the, the cold thing or the morning where it's really cold and then they... And they don't take their things out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they start to sweat. I mean they don't have the extreme heat stroke mm -hmm. but they experience it. That's true. So yeah, good point. You can take off layers. We're not saying we'll run around streaking naked. No or bras saying, and underwears or anything like that. I don't know. If I'm having heat stroke, I will be in my underwear. Put me in my underwear. I don't want to be risking anything. <laughs> oh my god. Let's keep talking about it. Okay. So another way is you could cool the person with water. Yes. With well, ice pack. Yeah. Those. But I mean water, like you can dump water on them. Yes. You could put their feet like in the brook, running water. Mm -hmm. You can give them water to drink. That's a good, like the brook, like you said, yeah. that's a good thing because I feel like me, my feet will burn when it's the heat and stuff mm -hmm. and you put your feet in the nice cold water, it like cools down your whole body. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It works the other way too in the winter time when you're hiking and you have too much heat in your boots. On um, that way, you take them out and you put them in the snow and it has the oh. same kind of effect. The coolness, it has, I think it like squeezes your capillary, your veins and it squeezes your blood up. Oh. That's what makes it feel good. That's cool. I think. Well, I kind of like that story. If, we'll go if, with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You can also throw someone in the shower. Yes. Now, I'm not saying throw them in the shower, but no, I mean but, you can like help them into a shower. But make sure you don't leave them in the shower by themselves. Definitely not, because if they have a shock or if they pass out, you want to be right there to help them, make sure they don't hit their head, right. hurt themselves. I mean, that's always, if someone's in that situation, they're in danger, so you're trying to help them at that point. You don't want to just... You're cool off. I'm going to go watch TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, you want to care for them. Right. Yes. So next one is a wet towel or a cooling cloth or a wet bandana and you put it on their That's neck or something. That's another good one, yeah. The, the towel thing works great. I mean, I, you put it in the freezer? Yeah, I mean, it works. You know, when you're sick, 
and we hate to talk about it, but when you're sick, you know, you're overheating, you're yes. exerting so much, and we normally have like a washcloth in the freezer and a washcloth on our neck or on our head, and we kind of rotate them every 10 minutes, and it works really good. It does, it cools your body down. So that might be a, a, an approach, maybe dish towels, because mm -hmm. they're a little bit bigger, so they hold a little bit more coolness, right. a little more water, last a little longer, and you get a rotation going to help, you know, put it over their neck, um, you want the masses of their body and their head mm -hmm. is really what you want to keep cool more than arms and legs. Yes, and especially plus in Arizona, the water here is not cold. I mean, I know I went to visit Frankie and <laughs> I'm like, where's the cold water? Am I? Like, cool <laughs> shower is still 101 degrees. <laughs> it's like you get out of the shower. I'm like, okay, find me a cold cloth because it's so hot. So then, and then once you have them like with water, whether it's on them or you have towels on them, put them in front of a fan or in front of the AC because yeah. that blowing air is going to cool you off quick. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so that's true. a good one, the moving air. Yes. If a person goes into hyperthermia, 911, call 911. Or if you think it will be faster for you to set, bring them to the hospital, do that. Yes. But the hospital is, you need emergency yes. medical care at that point. There's nothing you can do. You can give them the cool towels. It's going to help them, but they still need the medical attention. Yes. So definitely do that. I mean, and it's not something where you think about it. It's, you need to experience it. Let's go over those um, symptoms one more yes. time. We'll put them on the screen too. So that they know. That is confusion, dehydration, um, flushing, you're, you're, like you're flushing, and rapid breath. Nervous system is failing. Yeah, like you can't move your fingers the right way. Yeah, and then there's lightheaded. Mm -hmm. You got the muscle spasm. Like painful spasms at this yes. point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Shallow breath, which is associated with rapid breathing. You know, the <laughs> right. It's kind of a symptom, almost like panting from a dog. Yeah. Yeah. They won't eat anything, obviously. Mm -mm. Uh, the clammy skin. Yep, pale looking, clammy. Yeah, uh -huh. clammy is like the sweaty wetness, but it's not drippy. Right. And then the pale, obviously, you know, when you see someone, you say they look like a ghost. People all experience that. Yeah. Then you have the stomach cramp. Yep. Is a. It's another symptom, and then possibly even fainting. Right. Is That's a... why it's like nine one one or in the car immediately. Yeah. Because if someone passes out. Now you have a sack of potatoes you're dealing with. Right. And it's not so easy, especially if you're alone. Heavier. Yeah, because, I mean, it's more than potatoes. Yes. Right. And it's just like, and it's not no one's fault. It's just like we're not good at picking people up like that. But I mean, so that's the point. You, to try to rescue someone, it sounds like, oh, I'll just drag them in the car. It's not as easy as it sounds. No. Especially if you're not strong. And then I also, I think we talked about that when we had an emergency for us and I was still walking. He says, go into the car. He yeah. Said, That's a... And then, and before you know it, you were not even able to talk to me anymore. Right. So, yes. Yeah. So that's, that's definitely one of them. So that, that's a risk. That's a danger mm -hmm. for the person helping and the person experiencing the heat stroke. Right. I mean... I think that's... I think we gave them good advice. I, I think, think we gave so. them good ideas. Yeah. And uh, stay cool, everyone. It's midsummer right now. It is. Enjoy your summer. But hydrate. <laughs> stay hydrated. Water, water, water. Uh, and we're sorry for this funky video, but... I know. Uh, man, it's... Con we tried and it messed us up. Well, we messed up. We... Whatever. Something messed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The universe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we'll go with that. All right, guys. Bye. See you next time. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video. Your views, likes, and shares are very important to our success. And make sure you show your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing. As always, 25% of our earning goes through an MS charity that you help choose. And maybe we can help each other. Maybe. Anything is possible. We'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time.